Assalamu alaikum students, I am Vaseem Ikram. This is the fourth lecture in a series of 45 lectures on digital logic design. So, how are you today? I hope you have been keeping well. Pishli dafa humne floating point format pe baat ki thi, jo ke perhaps thoda sa difficult hai. Abhi tak jo bhi jin formats pe humne baat ki hai, wo aap decimal number system mein use karte rahe hain. So, thoda sa different hai. Difficult nahi hai. That's why I keep on saying ke practice karni padegi. Practice hogi, so you would get to use these, uh, the binary number system. So, let's uh, start today's lecture by recalling or reviewing the uh, contents discussed in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we talked about floating point numbers and how we represent floating point numbers. We said if we need to represent very large numbers or very small numbers or numbers having a, an integer part and a fraction part, we need to use the 32-bit single precision, uh, single precision floating point representation. 32-bit floating point representation mein, the most significant bit is the sign bit, uh, then you have the 8 exponent bits and then you have the 23 mantissa bits or the fraction bits. The exponent uh, 8 bits are represented in excess or biased 1, 2, 7 uh, number system. Uh, biased number system baad mein discuss karenge. Uh, the 32 bit floating point representation allows us to represent very large numbers of the order of 2 raised to power 127. We can also represent very small numbers of the order of 2 raised to power minus 126. Jo zero number tha, we said if we reserve the exponent to have all zeros, that means the number zero. Agar exponents mein sare ones aaj hai, that means it's the number infinity. Okay, now let's suppose you have two floating point numbers. Uh, can you straight away add them or subtract them and carry out other arith arithmetic operations? Or do you need to convert them back into the normal binary? Well, you can perform addition using the same floating point format. Let's take an example. Uh, you have the number 200 and another number 300. Uh, exponential form mein kaise represent karte hai? Uh, 200 is 2 into 10 power 2. And 300 is of course 3 into 10 power 2. In dono ko agar add karna ho, what do you do? 2 plus 3 gives you 5 and the exponent remains the same. So it is 500 or 5 into 10 power 2. Similarly, if you have th uh, two 32-bit floating point numbers, so all you have to do is to add the mantissa part, okay, ensuring that the exponents are the same. If they are not the same, then you have to uh, manipulate the decimal point so that uh, the exponent part is the same. So, Let's consider another example, the number 3000 and the number 200. 3000 exponential form mein likha jata hai 3 into 10 power 3 and 200 likha jata hai 2 into 10 power 2. So, of course, aap directly inko add nahi kar sakte. You have to manipulate the decimal point. So, 2 into 10 power 2 becomes 0.2 into 10 power 3. Now, you can add. 3 plus 0.2 gives you 3.2 and exponent is 3. So, similarly, is the, similar is the case with the floating point addition. Subtraction kaise karenge? Again, you just subtract the mantissa part ensuring that the exponent part is the same. If they are not the same, you adjust the decimal point. Multiply kaise karenge? Multiply again, you simply uh, multiply the mantissa parts and you add the exponent part. Okay, it's uh, 2 into 10 power 2 plus uh, rather multiply 3 into 10 power 2. So, the answer is 6, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, 6, 10 uh, power 2 exponent you add, you get 4. Division is again very similar. You simply divide the mantissa part and you subtract the exponent parts. Now, how would you represent uh, larger numbers uh, than 2 raised to power 127 and smaller numbers uh, as compared to 2 raised to power minus 126? Well, there is another uh, floating point format which is known as the double precision floating point format. 
It uses 64 bits to store a number. The most significant bit is used to represent the sign. The next 11 bits are used to represent the exponent part. The exponent is written in the form of a biased 1023 number. As I've said, we would be talking about this, uh, this biased number system. The remaining 52 bits are used to represent the mantissa part. So you can represent very large numbers or very small numbers using the double precision 64-bit floating point representation. Now, the question arises, uh, how would the digital system, the computer, it would know how to use this number? Is it a 32-bit unsigned representation or is it a 32-bit floating point representation? Well, as I had said before, you have to inform the digital system. How? Well, you have been doing programming, you have learned programming. What do you do when you write a program? Pella step you hota ke aap variables define karte hain. You declared those variables. So you have the variable value, it is of type real. You have a variable ABC, it is of type integer. Now, once you have declared and defined these variables, throughout the program, whenever you call or use the variable value or ABC, or when you execute these variables, the computer knows that the value variable is using the data type floating. The other variable is using the data type integer. So you have to inform the computer or the digital system through instructions. We talked about the hexadecimal number system. Hexadecimal number system, we said, is a base 16 number system. So each digit of a hexadecimal system represents up to 16 values. Jo number hai hexadecimal number system mein, you have 0 to 9, and then capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D, capital E, and capital F. So F hexadecimal digit represents 15 in the decimal number system. Aage counting kaise karte hai? hexadecimal number system ko use karte hai? Well, to represent decimal 16 in hexadecimal number system, you have to use two digits. Most significant digit konsa hai? It's one hexadecimal mein. Least significant digit konsa hai? It's zero. So 16 decimal is represented as one zero. 17 decimal kya hoga? It's one. 1. 18 decimal kya hoga? 1, 8. So in this manner, you just continue and you can count in hexadecimal number system. Hexadecimal number system use kyun karne? Basically, we said when you write large binary numbers, for example, koi 40 bit ka binary number hai. So when you write 40 bits, 1s and zeros, you are going to make a mistake. Take koi ek one galat lik diya, apne zero lik diya, ya one kar diya, kisi zero ko. Now, to write this long 40-bit uh, binary number in a concise and in short form, you would use the hexadecimal number system. So basically, hexadecimal number system allows you to convert long binary strings into short uh, numbers, of course, written in the hexadecimal form. Convert karte kaise hai? Well, you write out the string, you divide the string, of course, the binary string into groups of four bits. Her group of four bit ko aap replace kar rahe uske hexadecimal equivalent se. So for example, you have a group of four bits 0, 1, 1, 1, which is uh, 7. So you would replace that with hexadecimal 7 and so on. Hexadecimal ko binary mein kaise convert karna hai? Again, it's very easy. Let's suppose you have the number 7f hexadecimal. So 7 is going to be replaced by four binary bits 0, 1, 1, 1 and f is going to be replaced by another set of four bits, one, 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 one. Now, you know how to convert from hexadecimal to binary and from binary to hexadecimal. In the real world, we said we use decimal number system. So you should be able to convert from hexadecimal to decimal and from decimal to hexadecimal. We purana tarika jo hum use karte aare different number system ke saath. So when you are interested in converting a hexadecimal number into decimal, what do you use? Sum of weights method. We up ek expression likhenge, solve the expression, you get the answer.
डेसिमल को आपने हेक्सा डेसिमल में कैसे कन्वर्ट करना है इट्स दी रिपीटेड डिवीजन मेथड राइट सो रिपीटेड डिवीजन में किसके साथ डिवाइड करेंगे 16 के साथ राइट सो यू हैव सम डेसिमल नंबर यू डिवाइडेड बाय 16 यू गेट ए क्वेश्चन वैल्यू यू गेट ए रिमाइंडर रिमाइंडर आपने नोट कर दिया क्वेश्चन को दोबारा से आप 16 से डिवाइड कर रहे हैं उसमें सो यू कीप ऑन डिवाइडिंग अनटिल द क्वेश्चन वैल्यू बिकम्स जीरो दैट इंडिकेट्स एंड ऑफ कन्वर्जन वो जो रिमाइंडर्स आपने नोट किए हैं वो दोबारा से लिख लें दैट गिव्स यू दी हेक्सा डेसिमल इक्वेलेंट ऑफ द डेसिमल नंबर नाउ If you use uh, these hexadecimal numbers, then of course you can perform uh, multiplication using hexadecimal numbers, division, subtraction, and addition. Addition, of course. So uh, we did some examples. I don't need to repeat that. Uh, addition in hexadecimal would, of course, generate carry, uh, as uh, as you when uh, as uh, rather when you add decimal numbers, carry is generated there. When you add binary numbers, carry is generated there. Similarly, if you subtract two hexadecimal numbers, uh, you might need to uh, borrow. Let us look at the octal number system. The octal number system is a base eight number system. So each digit of an octal number system would represent values from zero to seven. You cannot represent eight in octal. So what do you do when you need to write eight? Basically, you use two digits. The most significant digit would be a one, and the least significant digit would be a zero. Uh, nine, how will it be? One, one, ten. It's one, two, and so on. So the next set of eight numbers, decimal numbers, would be represented using two digits of the octal uh, number system. The most significant digit would be one, and the least significant digit would be uh, starting from zero and going all the way up to seven. The next number would start with two zero, then two one, and so on. Let's have a look at the octal number system. The first slide would show the uh, octal representation of decimal numbers, and the second slide would show the counting in octal. The octal number system has uh, eight values. It is a base eight number system. So the values in the octal number system are from zero to seven. So they, in fact, represent the first eight values of the decimal number system, as, she, as seen in the table. Uh, binary equivalence of the octal numbers can be represented using three bits because we have a range of eight numbers. So the binary equivalent zero zero zero. Represents octal zero and binary one 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 represents octal seven. The table shows octal equivalence of decimal numbers eight to thirty one. Octal number seven has the largest value. To represent decimal eight, a two digit octal octal number is used. The most significant digit is a one, and the least uh, significant digit is a zero. Uh, so the decimal numbers eight to fifteen are represented by the two digit octal combination. Similarly, the decimal numbers 16 to 23 are represented by another two-digit octal combination. The most significant digit is two, and the least significant digits vary from zero to seven. And similarly, for higher octal uh, decimal numbers, uh, why do we need to use the octal number system? Basically, reason uska woh hai jo hexadecimal number system mein tha. Uh, when we write uh, large or long strings of binary numbers, uh, error ke chances hote hain. So to represent uh, long binary strings in a compact, concise form, you use the octal number system. But since we have the hexadecimal number system, so octal number system is not very frequently used. Anyway, since we are discussing the octal number system, let's look at converting from decimal to octal, octal to decimal, and octal to binary, and binary to octal. So let's first start by looking at the conversion from binary to octal. कैसे होगा वेल वही तरीका है जो हमने हेक्सा डेसिमल कन्वर्जन के लिए इस्तेमाल किया था यू राइट आउट द बाइनरी स्ट्रिंग उसको डिवाइड कर दें इन टू ग्रुप्स ऑफ थ्री बेट्स नॉट फोर बेट्स बिकॉज दिस इज ए बेस एट नंबर सिस्टम एंड रिमेंबर थ्री बेट्स बाइनरी बेट्स रिप्रेजेंट ए सिंगल डिजिट ऑफ द ऑक्टल नंबर सिस्टम सो यू डिवाइड द बाइनरी स्ट्रिंग इन टू ग्रुप्स ऑफ थ्री then what do you do you just replace that binary group of 3 bits by its equivalent octal number 
so uh, 0 1 1 hai it would be replaced by octal 6 1 0 1 hai that would be replaced by octal 5 and so on octal numbers can be converted into binary how again we method use karenge jo aapne hexadecimal se convert kar, uh, karne ke liye samal kiya tha so you have the number let's say 7 6 octal so 7 is going to be replaced by its binary equivalent 1 1 1 6 is going to be replaced by its binary equivalent 1 1 0 so you have a 6 bit binary equivalent of a two digit octal number ye baad mein hum iski slides wagaira examples dekhenge let's consider converting octal number system into decimal number system again there are two methods one is the indirect method the indirect method would be you convert from octal to binary and then binary to decimal the other standard method is the sum of weights method so you have an octal number you write out an expression usko jab ab solve karenge you would get the decimal equivalent the base system is 8 so base number 8 use ho raha hoga how do you convert from decimal to octal Again, uh, you have the indirect method where you convert to binary and from binary to the other number. Uh, the standard method is the division by 8 or the repeated division by 8 method. So you have a decimal number which you are trying to convert into octal. What do you do? You divide it by 8. You get a quotient value, you get a remainder value. You note down the remainder, you divide the quotient again by 8. You keep on doing this until the quotient value becomes zero. That means end of conversion, you just write out the remainders and that would give you the octal representation of the decimal number. Now you can in fact perform all arithmetic operations using octal number, syst uh, number system as you did with the hexadecimal number system. So you can add two octal numbers, you can subtract octal numbers, multiply, divide. We rules apply honge jo decimal mein, binary mein, hexadecimal mein apply ho rahe When you add, a carry might be generated. When you subtract, you might need to borrow something from the next uh, higher digit. So uh, let us look at uh, the examples of these conversions, uh, the addition and the subtraction. Consider the binary to octal conversion first. Uh, consider the 21 bit binary string which is to be converted to octal. The 21-bit binary string is divided into groups of 3 bits starting from the least significant bit. 7 groups of 3 bits are formed. In the next step, each group of 3 bits is replaced by the equivalent octal digit. The result is a 7-digit octal number. Now consider another example. Consider the 13-bit binary string which is to be converted into octal. The 13-bit binary string is divided into groups of 3 bits starting from the least significant bit. Now 4 groups of 3 bits are formed and an incomplete 5th group with a single bit is formed. What do we do? We add 2 most significant 0 bits in the 5th group to, uh, to make it a complete group. Now each 3-bit group is replaced by the equivalent octal digit to complete the conversion. So the original 13-bit binary number is now represented as 13351 in octal. Let's now consider the octal to binary conversion. The octal number is 1726. Each octal digit is replaced by its equivalent 3-bit binary number. Thus, octal 1 is replaced by 001. Octal 7 is replaced by 111, octal 2 is replaced by 010, and octal 6 is replaced by 110. Now let us consider the sum of weights method to convert an octal number 4037 to decimal. An expression in terms of the base number 8 and weights is written as can be seen. The expression is solved to give 4 sum terms 20480. 24 and 7. The four terms are added to result in the number 2079, the decimal equivalent of octal 4037. Now let us consider the conversion of a decimal number into an equivalent octal number. The decimal number is 2079. It is divided by 8 which results in a quotient value of 259 and the remainder 7. 
the remainder 7 is noted and the equation 259 is divided by 8. 259 divided by 8 results in a quotient value 32 and a remainder value of 3. The remainder 3 is noted and the quotient 32 is divided by 8. 32 divided by 8 results in a quotient value of 4 and a remainder 0. The remainder 0 is noted and the quotient value 4 is again divided by 4. The result, uh, this results in a quotient value of 0 which indicates the completion of the repeated division by 8 method. The remainder 4 and the 3 remainders noted earlier represent the 4 digit octal number 4037. Let us now consider octal addition. Consider the addition of octal numbers 7602 and 4771. The two octal numbers are added by first adding the two least significant octal digits 2 and 1. The sum of the two octal digits is 3. The next two octal digits 0 and 7 are added and the result is 7. The octal digits 6 and 7 are added next. The answer in decimal is 13 which is represented as 15 in octal. Thus, the sum is octal 5 and the carry is 1 which is carried over to the most significant digit. Adding the most significant octal digits 7 and 4 along with the carry results in decimal 12 which is equivalent to octal 14. The sum is 4 and carry of 1 is carried over to the fourth octal digit position. The sum is 14573 octal. Consider the subtraction of octal 4771 from octal 7602. The two numbers are subtracted by first subtracting the least significant digits octal 1 from octal 2. The difference is octal 1. Next, octal 7 is subtracted from octal 0. A borrow is required from the next most significant digit. Borrowing a 1 means subtracting octal 7 from octal 1 0 which is decimal 8. The difference is octal 1. The octal number 7 is subtracted from octal 5 instead of octal 6 in the second digit position as a 1 had been borrowed from octal 6. To subtract octal, octal 7 from octal 5 requires another borrow from the most significant digit 7. Thus, subtracting octal 7 from octal 15 results in a difference of 6. The most significant digits are subtracted to result in 2. The difference of octal 7602 and 4771 is octal 2611. Up till now we have looked at four different ways of representing binary numbers. One of them was the floating point, the remaining were uh, the normal binary. There are again several other alternate ways of representing binary numbers. Let us have a look at those alternate methods. The Alternate methods which we would be discussing, the number one, uh, the first method is the excess code, uh, the second method is the BCD code and the third alternate uh, uh, way of representing binary numbers is the gray code. What is the excess code? Excess code or biased code is used by the floating point numbers. Why did we use the biased number uh, or the code uh, with the floating point numbers? We use it to represent the negative as well as the positive exponents. We had two options, either we increase the exponent bit by 1 to have a positive or negative sign or just to keep it as 8 bits and use the excess code method. So, let us consider an example before we look at the actual excess code. Consider the number minus 1, 0 and 1 in decimal. How would you represent this in binary? sign binary use karna hoga kyunke negative number bhi hai positive number bhi hai. So, positive 1 is represented as 0 1 0 signifies positive uh, and 1 is the magnitude. The 0 number itself is represented as 0 0 and negative 1 would be 1 1 1 the most significant 1 signifies the negative number and the least significant 1 represents the magnitude of uh, negative 1. Now, if you look at the three binary representations, you cannot compare them, right? Now, 1, 1 actually means 3 in unsigned binary. 
right? So it would have been better if minus 1 had been represented by bits 0, 0, 0 had been represented by bits 0, 1, and 1, positive 1 had been represented by 1, 0. So you have a smooth scale through which you can compare. So 0, 0 is of course less than 0, 1, which is in fact a 0. So the excess code is used to give a uniform scale to positive number and neg uh, negative numbers. Let us consider an example. We are going to be using an excess 8 code to represent numbers between minus 8 to plus 7. Consider the decimal number range positive 7 to minus 8. These positive and negative decimal, decimal numbers can be represented by the 2's complement representation as can be seen in the table. The magnitude of positive and negative numbers can not be easily compared if the numbers are represented in 2's complement form. The decimal number range plus 7 to minus 8 is represented using an excess 8 code that assigns 0000, 0, 0, 0 to minus 8, the lowest number in the range and 1111 plus 7, the highest number in the range. Now, excess code 8 or excess 8 code is obtained by adding number to the lowest number minus 8 in the range such that the result is 0. So now, the number which you add to the lowest number minus 8 to give you a 0 is the number 8. So that is how you get excess 8 code. Minus 7 is represented as a 1 because 8 is added to minus 7, the result is 1. So you write 0, 0, 0, 1, which is the excess 8 notation. The resulting code which you get is known as the excess 8 code or biased 8 code. We have just seen an example of excess 8 code. Excess 8 code is in fact a binary code which has been shifted by 8. The excess or biased 127 code which we use to represent the exponent part in the 32-bit floating point representation is in fact again a binary code which has been shifted by 127. Now let us look at another representation, the BCD code. Now you must have uh, traveled uh, via train. So when you go to a railway station, you see those huge uh, uh, clocks, digital clocks where time is shown as decimal digits. Uh, you must have also seen these clocks in buses. So now the clock circuit is a digital circuit which sends out or displays time on a seven segment display. Now let's suppose you need to display the time 12 o'clock. So how do you display the two digits? Well, you have to send out some binary code to display the digit 2 and send out some binary code to display the digit 1. Now, since you are displaying decimal numbers 0 to 9, you cannot go beyond that, right? If you uh, need to display 12, then you are displaying two digits, right? Each digit can change from 0 to 9. So now, how many bits do you require to display a single decimal digit from 0 to 9? Well, you require 10 different codes, binary codes. So how do you rep represent decimal digit 0? bits 0, 0, 0, 0. How would you represent the highest decimal number 9? Binary number 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, you can get more combinations if you use 4-bit binary. So you can also have a number 1, 1, 0, 0, which is in fact 12. But you do not use binary codes higher than 1, 0, 0, 1. So the BCD representation only uses the first 10 binary codes starting from 0000, 0, 0, 0 up to 1001. 0, 0, 1. Now as I've said, where are they used? These binary codes or the BCD code is used to display decimal numbers. Now if you learn to use these BCD codes, then you can of course represent decimal digits using these BCD codes. You can in fact perform additions and subtractions using BCD numbers. Let us have a look at an example which shows us how we can add two BCD numbers. Let us first consider the BCD code. 
As I had said earlier, BCD code represents the decimal digits 0 to 9. So, a 4 bit BCD code 0000, 0 represents decimal 0 and 1001 represents decimal 9. A 4 bit binary code can represent up to 16 different values. The first 10 binary codes represent the decimal numbers 0 to 9. The remaining 6 codes uh, 1010, 1011, 1100, 1101, 1110 and 1111 are considered to be invalid BCD codes. Consider the addition of two two digit BCD numbers 23 and 45. BCD numbers are added using binary addition method resulting in 68. Now consider the addition of two two digit BCD numbers 23 and 49. Adding least significant digits 3 and 9 results in 12, represented as 1100. Now, 1100 is an invalid BCD digit. Secondly, adding 3 and 9 in decimal should result in 2 as the sum and 1 as the carry. The BCD result 0110-1100 is equivalent to 62, which is incorrect as the carry generated by the addition of the least significant digits has not been considered. When addition of BCD digits results in an invalid BCD number or a carry, the number 0110 which represents decimal 6 is added to the result. Reconsidering the addition of BCD 23 and 49, the addition of digits 3 and 9 results in 1100 an invalid BCD number. A 0110 which is decimal 6 is added which results in 0010 and a carry which is added to 0110 to result in 0111. Now the BCD number 0111-0010 represents 72 which is the correct answer. We have just seen the BCD code. BCD code represents decimal uh, digits from 0 to 9. So, the binary code 1010 which represents decimal 10 is invalid. So, only the first 10 uh, binary codes are used. BCD in fact stands for binary coded decimal. The third representation, the gray code representation, let us have a look what or rather where do we use this gray code. Now, if you look at the binary code when you let us suppose count from 2 to 3, how many bits change? Only the first or the least significant bit changes. Let us suppose you are counting from 7 to 8, how many bits change? Well, 7 is 0, 1, 1, 1 and 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0. 4 bits have changed. Now, in certain electromechanical applications of digital systems, you would like to keep the bit change to 1 when you count up or down to the next successive value. The gray code is a binary code which allows you to represent successive uh, numbers where the bit change is limited to 1. So, for example, when you count from 3 to 4 or from 3 to 2, the changes in bits would be limited to 1. As I have said before, uh, you need to restrict the bit change to 1 when you count from one number to the other successive number. Let us have a look at an example which explains the utility of the gray code. But before that, I would like to mention that the gray code is not a positional code. Binary code we said was a positional code because each bit represents a certain value. Gray code is not a positional code. Now, let us have a look at the example. Let us consider the 3 bit binary code and the 3 bit gray code representing the decimal numbers 0 to 7. The binary code is a positional code and the 3 bits starting from the least significant bit have the weights 1, 2 and 4. The gray code is not a positional code. However, the change from one value to the next using the gray code guarantees a single bit change. So, as you can see counting from 0 to 6, the change between successive representations or successive numbers 
is limited to a change of only one bit. Consider the example of shaft encoders that best explain the utility of the gray code. The diagram shows a disk connected to the shaft of a rotating machine. The shaded areas on the disk indicate conduct conducting strips connected to plus 5 volts. The non-shaded area indicate non-conducting strips. The three stationary brushes A, B and C touch the surface of the rotating disk. The three brushes are connected to three LED lamps through wires. As the disc rotates, the brushes come in contact with the conducting area and the insulated area. The three LEDs display the position of the rotating shaft in terms of three bit numbers. Consider the disc on the left. If the disc on the left rotates in the anti-clockwise direction by 45 degrees, the brush A comes in contact with the non-conducting strip. Thus, LED connected to brush B lights up indicating binary 010. Consider the disc on the left. If the disc on the left rotates in an anti-clockwise direction by 45 degrees, the brush A comes in contact with the conducting strip at 5 volts and turns on the LED indicating binary 001. If the disc continues its rotation and after another rotation of 45 degrees, brush B comes in contact with the conducting strip and brush A comes in contact with the non-conducting strip. Thus, LED connected to brush B lights up indicating binary 010. Thus, at any instant of time, the LEDs indicate the angular position of the rotating shaft in steps of 45 degrees. Assume that the three brushes A, B and C are not aligned properly and brush B is slightly ahead of brushes A and C. Now, if the disc rotates 90 degrees from its start position, brush A is in contact with the conducting strip, brush B due to its misalignment is in contact with the conducting strip and brush C is in contact with the insulated strip. Thus, when the disc rotates, the LEDs will show a 001 followed by a 011 for a short duration when the disc rotates from 90 degrees to 91 degrees and then it would display 010. Thus, due to misalignment, the count value jumped from 1 to 3 and then back to 2. Consider the disc shown on the right. The conducting and non-conducting strips follow a gray code pattern 000, 001, 011, 010, 110, 111, 101 and 100 representing decimal numbers 0 to 7. Now even if the brushes are misaligned, the LEDs would always display the correct count value. We have just looked at an example of the gray code. We might be looking at other examples of uh, gray code during the course of the study. Up till now, we have been looking at only numbers, positive numbers, negative numbers, numbers having fraction part, numbers having an integer part. Now, we said in the beginning, in the first lecture, that computers can be used to write documents. You have been writing programs, so in your program, you have text information as well as numbers. So, how do you represent uh, capital letter A, small letter B, number 0, number 9, full stop, comma, question mark. So, all these characters have to be again representing in binary because as we know, uh, digital systems only recognize binary. Now, the representation which is used to represent text punctuation marks is known as an alphanumeric format or the alphanumeric representation. The most commonly used representation is the ASCII representation, the American code for information interchange. It is a 7-bit format. So, how many codes do you think it can represent? 2 raised to power 7 gives you 128 unique codes. Now, 127 uh, or rather 128 uh, character ASCII code is divided into capital letters, small letters, numbers, 
punctuation marks and some control characters. Let us have a look at the ASCII table. Consider some of the ASCII codes that represent the numbers 0 to 9. The ASCII code 011, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is also equivalent to 30 hexadecimal represents the number 0. The ASCII code 011, 0, 0, 0, 1, which is also equivalent to 31 hexadecimal represents the number 1. Similarly, the ASCII code 011, 1, 0, 0, 1, which is, an, uh, which is equivalent to 39 hex represents the number 9. How do we represent the capital alphabet letters and the small uh, alphabet letters? Well, the lowercase alphabet letters A to Z are represented by ASCII codes 110, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, which is 61 hex, which represents small letter A, up to 111, 1010, 0, 0, which is 7A hexadecimal and it represents the lowercase uh, character Z. The ASCII code 100 0001, which is equivalent to 41 hex, represents the uppercase alphabet A and the code 101 1010, which is equivalent to 5A hex, represents the capital uh, character Z. The 32 control characters are represented by ASCII code 000, 000, 000, which is 0 hex up to 001, which is equivalent to 1F hex. These control characters are not seen on the screen. They are simply executable codes. The 7-bit ASCII code is known as the alphanumeric code because it is used to represent alphabet characters as well as numbers. Now, 128 different characters is not enough. You would like to represent or write some other characters, some graphical characters. So, we have another version of the ASCII code which is known as the extended code. The extended ASCII code is an 8-bit code. So, how many codes can we uniquely represent using the extended ASCII code? Well, it is 2 raised to power 8 or 256 unique codes. The 128 uh, codes which we have just uh, looked at is a standard whereas the extended version the remaining 128 codes are not a standard different uh, vendors use different versions of the extended set. Now even an 8-bit ASCII code which allows you to represent up to 256 different characters is not enough. On your computers, you must have seen some Urdu characters or Arabic characters. So, how do you represent such characters? There are other languages, Japanese, Chinese. Well, there are other standards. Uh, one of them is the Unicode. The Unicode is a 16-bit code. So, how many characters can you represent a Unicode? Well, 2 raised to power 16. So, nearly 64,000 different unique characters can be represented using the Unicode. There are other codes. Now, let us look at error detection. In the first lecture, we mentioned that digital systems are very reliable systems. But even then, when you store information or when you transmit information, there are chances that the information is going to be, uh, it is going to be corrupted. Now, what do you do? Well, uh, in order to have secure information, you need to have a mechanism to detect errors if they have occurred and, and perhaps try to remove those errors. Now, one simple method of detecting errors is using the parity bit. Let's consider an example. Let's suppose you and your friend set up a piece of wire, a communication link, and you send some numbers, let's say 0 to 7, to your friend across that wire link. You agree that each number is going to be represented in an 8-bit binary format. So, you would be sending 8-bit numbers to the other end. Your friend at the other end would read the number and send back its 2's complemented form. Now, let's suppose you send the number 7 and your friend should be receiving the number 7, of course, in binary. 
Now, how would you ensure that your friend has received the correct number? It is seven and it is not eight. To ensure correct exchange of information between you and your friend, you decide that you would only be sending numbers which have an odd number of ones. So that means you would send the number one, how many ones does it have an odd number of ones? Uh, you could send two, how many ones does it have again an odd number of one? You cannot send three because there are two ones, so it is an even number of ones. Well, this particular uh, uh, requirement restricts the number which you can exchange. Well, why not use a better method? The sender, you, you count the number of ones in your message. If it's an even number of ones, you append an extra bit and set it to either zero or one so that the total number of bits add up to an odd number. So for example, you are sending the number three. How many bits do you have? you have an even number of bits. So you append a parity bit, which is known as the odd parity bit, because you would be setting that parity bit to one so that the total number of bits add up to an odd number. So you would now be transmitting nine bits, the eight bit number, two, uh, rather three, and the parity bit. Your friend would receive the nine bits. He would count the number of bits in that message. So if it's an odd number of bits, then that means the message is correct. No bit has been corrupted. If the number of ones in the message turns out to be an even number, that means some error has occurred. So now you as a center would be generating 8-bit numbers, counting the number of ones, setting the parity bit to one or zero so that the total number of ones in the message comes out to be odd, transmitting the number to the other end. Your friend at the receiver would be counting the number of ones in the message, including the parity bit. If it turns out to be odd, then the message is correct. If it turns out to be even, then the message is incorrect. Then perhaps he can uh, send you a signal requesting you to send or resend the message. You could use the even parity method. In the even parity method, uh, you and your friend decide that the number of ones which you would be sending would be an even number. So the, uh, the procedure is the same. You would generate a number, an 8-bit number. You would count the number of ones. If it is an odd number, then you would attach a parity bit set to one so that the total number of ones come out to be even. So you would be sending these 9-bit messages at the other end, the receiver end. Your friend would be counting the number of ones. If they are even, then the message is correct. If they are not even, the message is incorrect. So we either use the odd parity method or the even parity method to detect 1-bit errors. Let us have a look at an example which explains this parity bit method of detecting uh, errors. Consider an example of odd parity error detection. The original data which is to be sent or which is to be stored is 1001, 1010. With odd, odd parity, the total number of ones should be an odd number. So how many ones do we have in the original message? An even number, there are four ones. So you append a parity bit and set it to one. So the total no number of ones now becomes an odd number. Now let's suppose this 9-bit information is stored or transmitted um, to a remote location. And at the remote location, the message has changed to 11011010. The most significant bit is the parity bit. How many ones do we have in the message? Six. Since we are using the odd parity scheme, the total number of ones in the message should have been odd. So this indicates a single bit error. Now let us consider that a two bit error occurs. So we send the message, the original message with the odd parity uh, bit, 11011010. Let's suppose the two bits which have been underlined change. What do you get at the receiver end? The total number of ones is still 
odd. So have we detected an error? No. So if a 2-bit error occurs, we are not able to detect an error. Now let us consider the third case. We send the original message with the parity bit and a 3-bit error occurs. The 3 bits which change due to an error are underlined. Now, how many ones do we receive at the receiver end? The total number of ones which have been received in the 9-bit message are 4. It is an even number. So that means an error has occurred. But we are not sure if a single bit error has occurred or a 3-bit error has occurred. But we know that an error has occurred. So in summary, by using a parity bit, we are able to detect 1-bit error, a 3-bit error, a 5-bit error, or a 7-bit error. But we are unable to detect even number, uh, even bit errors. For example, 2-bit error occurs, we are not able to detect that. A 4-bit error occurs, we are not able to detect that. We have just looked at an example of odd parity which is used, of course, to detect a single bit error. We said using the parity bits, we cannot detect uh, even bit errors. We end today's lecture here. Before we end, let us quickly summarize the topics which we have discussed. We started with the octal number system. We said it's a base eight number system and it is basically used to represent large binary strings in a short, concise form. We talked about alternate ways of representing binary numbers. We talked about the access code, which we use in the floating point uh, implementation. We talked about BCD code, which is used to represent decimal digits in binary. Again, applications are to display uh, uh, decimal digits on seven segment displays. Uh, we talked about a gray code which allows only one bit change when you count um, to the next successive value, the upper value or the lower value. We also talked about alphanumeric codes, the ASCII code. Uh, the alphanumeric or the ASCII code allows you to represent numbers, alphabet characters, um, punctuation marks and some control characters. Towards the end we looked at an error det a detection scheme which uses the odd parity method or the even parity method to detect 1 bit, 3 bit or 5 bit errors. Let us stop for today. With today's lecture, we have finished our discussion on number systems. As I have been saying before, keep practicing with the binary number system. You should be able to relate to binary numbers as you do with decimal numbers. So see you next time. Khuda Hafiz and Assalamu Alaikum.